Hello everyone. Today what we're going to do is we're going to go and check out PowerShell and we're going to check out Docker. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our own Docker container that's actually running PowerShell and we're going to run some PowerShell code inside it in an isolated way. Then what we're actually going to do is we're going to go and take our code, take our PowerShell container and combine them together and we're going to build our own Docker container with our own custom PowerShell code. So stick around and I hope you'll enjoy what's coming up. So first of all, what we need to do is actually go and download Docker. Okay, so let's just pop over to docker.com here. There's a big download button in the middle to download this for your platform, either Windows, Mac or Linux. It's a few hundred megs to download, but it's not too much, so it shouldn't take too long on your system. So let's download that now and let's actually start the install process. I'm on Windows, but the install process is going to be similar if you're using Mac or using Linux. They've got a nice GUI for each. There is also command line availability for this as well if you wanted to go and script this install out. So now we've got this installing, you have to bear in mind that on Windows it also needs something called WSL2 or Windows Subsystem for Linux. You can also use WSL1 if you're still using Windows 10. What this means is you're actually going to get a Linux environment on your Windows computer. I know, it sounds a bit crazy, right? But you can run Linux code on Windows machines today. Now Docker and containers mostly run inside Linux environments. And the PowerShell one is no exception. It still runs inside a Linux style container on top of your Windows machine. So once this Docker installation is completed, it's going to ask for a reboot because it's actually going to be producing these isolated container environments and has a background service running. So let's wait for our computer to restart. And once it has, we'll continue straight on. So now our machine has actually restarted, we can go and have a look here at Docker Desktop. Now it's got this nice little interface where I can see my images, I can see my containers, I can see all the stuff that I actually need. But most of the time with Docker, we are going to be working inside commands. So let's go check that out inside our terminal and let's also go and see how we can test that Docker is working. Now this Docker command is actually inherently hooked into the internet. And if I go and run this command docker run hello world, what it's going to do is it's going to go to the Docker hub. Now the Docker hub is a location where lots and lots of containers are stored, millions and millions of containers that are stored from people like you and me, and also the big companies publish on there too. So this one, hello world, is a test container. It's very small, it comes down very quickly and executes and produces just a text output. And this will show if our Docker system is actually working on our computer. Wonderful, we've got our output, we know Docker is working now, we know the service is running, so we can continue on. So the next thing I want to do is I want to pull or essentially download the Docker container from Microsoft that contains PowerShell 7. So to do that, We'll just run docker pull mcr.microsoft.com forward slash PowerShell. Now the MCR piece of this stands for Microsoft Container Registries. It's actually Microsoft's location where they store all of their wonderful containers that they make for us to use, PowerShell being one of them. So let's wait for that to download now. Now that's pulled down to my system, I can run docker run dash IT. And now this IT thing stands for interactive. So if I run docker run dash IT, it means that the container I want to run, in this case, the Microsoft PowerShell container, is going to run in interactive mode and it's going to provide me access to that isolated container space. In this sense, PowerShell. So if I run this command now, we can see I have a new PowerShell shell inside my existing one. I am inside the container. We can first of all check the PowerShell version. So I'm going to run $PS version table here. And what we'll actually see is that I have a PowerShell version of 7.4.2. This is the PowerShell version that's current as of me recording this video. Depending on when you're watching this video, we might even be on PowerShell 8, who knows? So I can execute some code in here. Let's check that this thing actually even has access to the internet from inside the container. 
We can do that in a couple of different ways. Well, we could do that in many different ways. But the two that I'm going to choose here is first of all, we'll do invoke web request. And this is going to go out to example.com. It's going to grab the entire website. It's going to pull it down. And we're going to see that within the shell, just like your web browser would run. And we can see we've actually got an output from this. So we can see that this is actually connected to the internet and has managed to communicate to example.com. Another way we could do this is with test dash connection. This is a little bit like a ping and we'll just send this to Google and we can see it hits Google four times here and returns some results. So we're confident this is actually connected to the internet. So the next thing we want to do is we want to go and do some test code. We want to run some form of program. So let's make a directory here, demo directory. This is where we can put some of our code. And what we're going to use for our code is a very simple programming test. This thing is called FizzBuzz. Now FizzBuzz, if you've never seen it before, is a programming question to kind of test your programming knowledge. And what that question is, is go through the numbers one to 100. And if you find a number that is actually divisible by three, print the screen Fizz. And if you find a number that is divisible by five, print to the screen buzz. And if you find a number that is divisible by three and five, for example, 15, go and print fizz buzz. So let's just go and execute that code in the shell and see what kind of results we actually get. And you'll see we've got a list of fizz buzz, fizz buzz, fizz, 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 buzz, 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 as it processes through each of those numbers and finds ones that are divisible by three and five. So what I want to do now is I want to save that to a little PowerShell file, a .ps1 file. The easiest way to do this, I'm just going to bounce up PowerShell INC here, paste that code in and go and save it as a PS1 file, as a script file that I can run in a moment. So now we've saved that PS1 file, we can just go and check that it works and produces an output, so that's great. But what we really want to do is we want to take our PowerShell container and we want to take that PowerShell file and insert it into that PowerShell container. Okay, that's cool, but let's start with something a little simpler. Let's take the PowerShell container and get the PowerShell container to talk to the PS1 file. So we're not creating anything custom just yet, but let's have a look at the command. We've got Docker run, that's great. We want to run the command. Dash IT, that's great. We want to run it interactive so we can see things and we can see the output. Dash RM, this is remove. So what that means is when this container completes its task, it finishes its purpose. It has no reason to be anymore. It has no raison d'etre. This is actually going to delete itself. That's great, it'll keep our system nice and clean. Dash V is volume. This is going to ask what data do we actually want to link to this machine? The data we want to link is actually the .ps1 file. So we've got $pwd, which is print working directory. So it's going to say, okay, from the current directory we're in, which is the directory that holds our PS1 file, go and access this PS1 file and insert it into the container. Once that's actually inserted, it's going to execute the code and we'll see what kind of output we get. And again, we get the same thing. We get FizzBuzz, but this has actually executed that PowerShell code inside the Docker container, not inside my shell. That's great, but it's not particularly reusable. What we want to do to make it reusable is to go and create our own custom container. Now to do that, we're going to need a special file. We're going to need a file called Docker file. This is just a text file, but with no extension. So let's go and have a look at this in Notepad, and we're just going to paste a little bit of information inside here. So we've got three special command lines. What this essentially is, it's a little tiny script file that tells Docker how to go and create a Docker container using my instructions. So that first file from is saying, let's go and get the base container. What is this going to run on? And this is going to run on 
the default PowerShell container, mcr.microsoft.com. Wonderful. The next one is copy. We're going to say copy, i.e. get this data and then insert it into that PowerShell container for future running. Great. So we've got like this container now. But when this thing executes, it needs some command. It needs some instruction to execute when I turn it on. And that's that final CMD. It's telling it PWSH, which is PowerShell 7, go and execute visbuzz.ps1. Wonderful. So once this builds our custom container, we can launch it and it's always going to execute the code that I tell it to, which is PWSH, visbuzz.ps1. So let's go and complete that build process by running a build command. So we can see the build command here is docker build t fizzbuzz image dot. So again, let's break it down. Docker build, great. We're building something. We're building, in this case, a container because containers is what Docker does. We've got dash T, which is tag. Now, you could consider this dash T for tag or title or even example name. So fizzbuzz dash image is going to be the name of the image that we are creating. Wonderful. I could call it potato, but that wouldn't make much sense because it's got fizzbuzz code running inside it. The final thing there is dot. It needs to know where the Docker file is. It needs to know this Docker build command, the instructions for how to build. Now, that dot is incredibly important because that dot means the current directory that I'm in. And in the current directory, I have a file called Docker file. And that's what the Docker build command is looking for. So let's go and execute this build process to construct our own custom image that we can then use to build more containers. All right. So now we can see our image is built. Let's go to the Docker Images section and check out what we've got on our computer. So if I just clear down that screen and run Docker Images, we're going to see the images that are currently on the drive. First of all, we see at the bottom our Hello World image. That was the first one that we actually downloaded uh, and actually executed to test that Docker works. That's still there. That's great. Then is our PowerShell image, and that's the one we pulled down from mcr.microsoft.com forward slash PowerShell. That's there. At the top, there is our custom image. There is our Fizzbuzz dash image. And we can now use this to create our own custom Fizzbuzz containers. So let's go and launch them. So I'm going to run Docker run again to run an image as a container. And we're going to put dash RM again, so it'll clean itself up. And let's go run our Fizzbuzz image and see what we get. We get an output with our fizzes and buzzes. Wonderful. So our custom image has been launched to execute that same code in an isolated space. If we go and look at the Docker desktop now, though, we can see very quickly when that does run, it flashes up and then disappears really quickly. That's because of the dash RM switch. It's cleaning up after itself. If we get rid of that dash RM switch, what we can actually see is every time a Docker container is created, it actually goes and builds a new name and a new Docker container. It exits the container because the code has completed, but it doesn't fully tear it down. So we could go forth and reuse it. But it is taking up resource. So we don't really want that. We want dash RM on if we're just running a container that executes code in kind of like a defined start and a defined finish. In our case of Fizzbuzz, our defined start and our defined finish is when it's processed all of those numbers. You'll also notice that if you don't actually give a container a name, it gives it a default random name. But Docker actually uses a random verb and the name of a famous scientist from history. So our latest Docker container that we span up is actually called Sad Da Vinci. Now, if we go and have a look at Sad Da Vinci, I don't know how happy or sad Leonardo Da Vinci actually was. But if we go and check it out, inside here, we'll see a number of things that we can look at, including the logs. This shows us our output. Remember, there's our fizzes and buzzes that are output into the shell. And we could also go and click the Inspect tab. Now, here we can actually see the code that's actually running or more to the point, the script that actually ran. In this case, we can see our script of fizzbuzz.ps1. Now, there's a lot more you can do with Docker and a lot more you can do within Docker desktop and a lot more you can do with the commands of Docker as well.
What we could do now we built this custom image is we could upload it to our own container registry. Now, if you want to know about container registries and how they actually work, I created a video for that here. And in this video, what we do is we don't use PowerShell, but we actually use Nginx. And we actually create our own custom web server inside a Docker container and then actually upload that to the Azure Container Registries. And then inside the Azure Container Registries, we then pull it down to deploy that into different Azure locations like Azure Container Apps and Azure Container Instances. So I hope you enjoyed this demo and feel free to go and check out my other videos on the same topics. And you'll join me next time for another PowerShell and maybe even another Docker video.